How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Hauna Cafe. My name is Amber, and sit down, get comfy, grab a cup of tea, or whatever warm beverage you prefer, because I have a spooky tale to tell. Now, before we get into, like, today's episode, we obviously talk about drinks. So today, I have super Irish breakfast, um, <clears throat> which is pretty much, as far as I know, just blended black teas. Like, that's literally what it says on the back. So, you know, pretty sure it's just black teas. I don't know if there's different kinds of black teas, but... <clears throat> I also have my cauldron because it's, you know, definitely almost Halloween. It's like August something, but, (laughs) um, it is Harry Potter. Uh, you know, I know that there's controversy with that, but I like the cauldron itself. So, (laughs) but let's try it. Hmm. Ooh. It's got a really nice flavor. It does just, like, taste like black tea to me, but it tastes a little bit stronger. It's probably, like, the super Irish breakfast part of it. But, uh, yeah. (laughs) Sorry, my hair looks a little bit of a mess. Not that you care at all, but I just got a shower, so, you know. (laughs) But uh, anyway, if you like, would want to try this tea, um, there is a link down in the description box below. If you buy the box of tea or a box of tea, um, you're help supporting the channel with uh, the Amazon affiliate thing. So thank you. So today we are going to be talking about the Bandage Man of Cannon Beach. Um, it's an older legend. I don't really know if it's really well known. Um, It takes place in Oregon. I don't know if it's Oregon. Oregon. Don't know. I'm going to say Oregon just because that's like what I grew up with. I know I'm probably going to get a bunch of people screaming in the comments. That's not how you pronounce it, but it's okay. (laughs) So, um, first I wanted to kind of like describe the location a little bit just so we kind of get an idea of what we're looking at because if you ask me this kind of location or this story kind of takes place in a weird place not weird place but like I guess when you think of like horror stories or like urban legends you think of like these isolated places or you think of like abandoned locations or stuff like that which it's kind of isolated but it's not so this story takes place in basically like a beach town so I don't know you know like from us me personally I'm in New Jersey so I have like Sea Isle, Ocean City, Wildwood, the Jersey Shore which isn't really that close to me, but they're basically just, like, beach towns where the ocean is right there, you know, you can go walk to the beach, you know, that's kind of the town that we're looking at, but this one seems a little bit more, like, nature forward, um, and there's, like, a a forest right next to the beach. Like I said, with our beach towns, it's literally just, like, condos, um, apartment houses, beach houses, where everybody is so crammed together in one spot that there's really no, like, trees or anything like that around. Um, and, like, this forest is probably, like, obviously outside of town, but I don't know. It just seems more of, like, a nature beach instead of, like, a commercial commercialized beach if that makes sense um kind of if you think of like twilight beaches um which they were actually filmed there um i think in some spots i could be wrong but <clears throat> basically if you think of that like you know the beaches in, in twilight or if you want to think of the goonies beaches because goonies was actually filmed in astoria oregon I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, um, which is about a half hour from Cannon Beach, which is where this story takes place. 
Cannon Beach looks pretty much like a typical sea town, like I was describing, but there's a highway right next to it, like right next to the town, that basically leads up and down the coast, and that highway is 101 to be exact. Every time I think, every time I say 101, I think of like Vault 101, but I don't think it's, <laughs> you know, it's nothing like that. Um, but along this highway is where our bandage man pops up. So picture this, it's late at night, you and your love bug or lover or whatever you want to call your significant other, uh, are out on one of the road overlooks and things are getting a little hot and heavy, you know, like a little steamy in the car, um, when suddenly you start smelling something similar to rotten flesh or decay. Uh, kind of ruins the date night a little bit, huh? Um, but in the darkness or even in the high beams of your car, you see the bandage man. He's described as tall, skinny, and decaying. And obviously he's covered in bandages. Like, you don't just get that name from nothing. Um, they're bloody and are kind of like falling off kind of like a mummy, you know? And obviously, this is the bandage man of Cannon Beach. Um, so the actual legend of the bandage man is that in the, it's kind of started in like the 1950s and 1960s. Um, there's once again, a bunch of different versions of this story. Um, it's either said to be a logger that was killed in a horrific sawmill accident which is why he was covered in all of those bandages. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that if he was killed in, like, a sawmill accident, there would be a lot more than just bandages on him, but maybe not. <laughs> um, there are other versions of the story where the man used to be a fireman or possibly an electrician. Um, his occupation just kind of, like, changes depending on who's telling the story. But either way, it's pretty much a creepy mummy dude who's just all wrapped up in bandages and he's peeking into cars and trying to stop public indecency. He really only seems to care about, like, teens or young adults that are, like, parked up in cars. Um, I don't know why he's specifically trying to stop, like, these certain, like, activities <laughs> that are going on, but... Um, on occasion, it is said that he targets, like, moving vehicles or convertibles, pickup trucks. Um, he'll jump into, like, the back of the vehicle and then mysteriously vanish before reaching down. Um, it's said that sometimes people don't even know that he's there until they smell him because, once again, he smells like rotting flesh, which I don't... <laughs> Honestly, if you don't notice somebody out, like, in the back of your truck or in your convertible, you need to look at your rear view mirror more. But, um, and the smell, like, the smell kind of, like, ugh, it makes me, like, feel sick to my stomach a little bit. Because I can kind of, like, not picture it, but I kind of know, you know, you, I'm sure we all know kind of what the smell of, like, raw is, whether it's rotted vegetables or rotting meat or, you know, it's, it's gross. So, <laughs> supposedly, according to the legend, uh, the bandage man likes to feed on dogs and small animals, but also sometimes the occasional unlucky person. I guess if you get caught by this guy, you have a prob probability of getting eaten. So, watch yourself. Um, there is actually a short story or tale that talks about someone's encounter with the bandage man. Um, according to the website Only in Your State, the story goes like this. Um, a young couple is parked in a truck somewhere near Cannon Beach. Oblivious to their surroundings, they were making out when the truck shifted as though someone had climbed up into the truck bed. They looked out the rearview mirror to find a disfigured man covered in bandages rocking the truck back and forth. He started pounding on the windows and on top of the truck as the boy pulled the truck out of the overlook and started racing down the highway. The couple drove from for a few miles when the bandage man, still beating on the truck, suddenly disappeared.
Some drivers have reported seeing a man covered in bandages running after their cars or even jumping into them. Um, people have seen him watching kind of along the beach and along Highway 101. So pretty much, honestly, it doesn't actually sound like like just teenagers and young adults that are going and like, you know, making out in the backseat of whoever's car. You know, it doesn't sound like they're the only ones that are, um, you know, reporting this. It kind of just sounds like there's some guy out there terrorizing anybody that happens to drive down this Highway 101 or if they go parking, you know. Um, supposedly, I'm not sure, I don't think I could find this road, but supposedly there's a road that was nicknamed Bandage Man Road, and it's kind of like a loop where people would, like, sneak off to have alone time. Um, I'm not sure if it's, like, a loop to turn around or, like, a, an a outlook or what's it called, an overlook where you kind of, like, pull off the highway to, like, a scenic view. Um, it could be that, I'm not sure. Um, but I think, honestly, if I wanted to do any kind of, like, you know, sneaky, sneaky stuff, uh, I don't think I'd pick Bandage Man Road, um, unless I'm trying to see, you know, the Bandage Man, but. So, the thing that doesn't really make sense with this legend is, from what I saw on Google Maps, which, you know, my knowledge is very limited, um, I couldn't really see any sawmills or anything really close by. Um, they do have sawmills there, but nothing really, like, close to the highway that I could tell. Um, so if this is a true story, I don't know why he's in this particular area. Um, I don't really know why he's going after kids who are just trying to, like, hook up, um, in cars. You know, it doesn't really make sense that he, um, you know, he got into a car, or he got into a sawmill accident, and now he spends his eternal life going after kids that are just hanging out or hooking up in cars. Like, it just, the two, in, the two pieces do not work together, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know. Um, as an urban legend, this one is missing some, like, crucial evidence to make it believable. Um, you know, there's no man, um, there, one, there's no sawmill around that I could find. There's no evidence of an actual man dying in a sawmill accident that was so horrific. You know, there's just none of the actual evidence to back it up. Um, and it's, it's just like a really strange urban legend, you know? It's basically a mummy just running around in the woods. I mean, it's still absolutely terrifying, um, because, you know, he can supposedly eat you, but it's just odd. It's just kind of like a bunch of different stories that were kind of like meshed again, meshed together, if that makes sense. Um, honestly, if I heard this story around the campfire, I would just kind of be a little confused more than anything like my mind I feel like would just start turning and I'd be like well why is he going after kids when he died in a sawmill accident wouldn't he be like at the sawmill like trying to protect people from them getting into sawmill accidents like that sounds more likely than just like you know eh, I'm gonna go terrorize kids that are just hooking up so that's my opinion on this anyway <laughs> um you know it's still, like, a creepy story that I feel like would maybe, like, freak out some kids, maybe, like, little kids, but, I mean, now at the age of 25, if I, for whatever reason, decided to go out parking, um, I don't think I'd be scared of this urban legend, if that makes sense. Um, so, I kind of wanted to kind of dig into what my opinion is on how this urban legend might have gotten started. Um, it's my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. Could not be, could be the farthest thing from the truth, but it's just something that makes sense to me, I guess. So, in the 1950s and the 60s, um, it was a time where, you know, people did things differently. 
Um, there were a lot more cases of couples like driving around their cars to desolate places in church in search for a little bit of like private time. Um, you know, cause if you think about it, you see all those movies where like they go to lover's lane or whatever, like lover's lane isn't really a thing nowadays that I know of, but you know, there are back in like those times, you know, if you're coming home from like a movie or something and you want to go smoosh, you know, you just stop off at some place and it happened a lot back then. So I feel like maybe parents of like these teenagers, uh, were trying to stop their kids from making like really dumb decisions. Like, you know, there's this bandage man that was out on this road and don't go out there and you won't get in trouble or you won't get caught by him or, you know what I mean? Like they were just making up this story to prevent kids, teenagers from, driving out into the middle of the woods to get up to trouble, you know? Um, <clears throat> so they pretty much made up this story of this creepy dude that stalks young people at these overlooks. Um, you know, personally, I don't know if that would have deterred me when I was a teenager. Um, I think as soon as my mom, like, started talking about ghosts, I would have been like, all right, I'm going to head over there because I want to see the ghost, not even, like, trying to hook up with some dude. I want to see this ghost. <laughs> but, um, it could have also been, like, local police in the area. Um, maybe they were getting a lot of calls of, like, parents looking for teens, and then they found them on this, you know, isolated overlook making out. Or they happened to be patrolling, and they had a bunch of cases of, like, you know, kids doing this stuff. Um, <clears throat> so they kind of just, like, used this story as a way to deter kids from wanting to drive out here. Because it's possible that they even got someone to dress up in a costume. Like, maybe that's how they came up with the bandage man. Like, they wrapped him in toilet paper or something. And was like, hey, go out and scare these kids. And then that's what they did, you know? So there could even be... A real life guy who pretended to be this bandage man of Cannon Beach and scare kids so that one person tells the story and then more people hear the story you know I mean that happens all the time actually and like while I think that this is kind of a good idea to stop people from going to the site I know personally just like as a me as a person there are still people that would go to those sites just for the creep factor. I mean, that's why it's still an urban legend to this day. You know, it was scary enough, spooky enough that it scared people. But I feel like people still probably went to those sites or drove down the highway to see this bandage man. Whether it's true or not, I mean, who knows. Um, but... Like, I personally can't tell you, like, how many cases from, like, the 1940s or the 1950s that actually had people coming and visiting, like, a murder site and taking pieces of it. Um, so I could s actually see this legend drawing more people out to these overlooks than scaring them away. I mean, maybe not in the 40s. I don't know, because, like, a lot of stuff happened then. But... You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like while they were trying to prevent kids from doing stuff, I feel like they were also kind of sending people and kids out there. But that's only, like, speculation if, you know, if this was the police or if this was parents coming up with this story to scare their kids. It, this is just my opinion, like I said. Um, it also could be... <clears throat> the kids themselves, um, all it takes is, like, one kid to start a rumor, and then, like, there you go, a uh, new local legend, then the key, ki then the teen, <laughs> then the teens are trying to, like, pr prank each other, um, of course, people are gonna dare each other to go out into the woods and get scared, um, so this kind of wouldn't surprise me, surprise me if this was the case either, like, maybe one, one group of kids decided to prank one guy, and then the one guy told all these other kids, and then they came out there, and then they saw, you know, it, either way, 
whether it's the parents, the police, the kids themselves, someone started this rumor somehow, or, like, this story somehow, and it led to, you know, us knowing about it today. Um, and it's crazy that this story has survived for pretty much over 70 years. If, you know, if it's true that it started in, like, the 50s and the 60s. Surprisingly, not a lot of locals know about this legend. Um, since the age of the internet, it's become more of an online legend rather than a local one. Um, so that also kind of leads, like, a different perspective. Like, what if this isn't even, like, an Oregon legend, you know, or original? You know what I mean? Maybe it was just somebody who started a story on the internet when it first, like, came around. And then it's just, like, you know, cycled over and over again. That's kind of something that you do have to take into account for a lot of these legends, is that it's possible that they didn't start in the 50s. They didn't start in the 60s. All it takes is one person to write a creepypasta type of story. And for the most part, as long as there's no way to, like, disprove it automatically, you have a legend. I mean, look at, like, Jeff the Killer. I mean, I know, obviously, everybody knows that that's creepypasta, but, like, even Slenderman and, like, the Alice killings that we talked about, those were all, like, creepypastas, but yet there's still some people, maybe not so much Slenderman and Jeff the Killer, but, like, the Alice killings, when I first read that, I was like, oh, wait, is this true? But then, obviously, I did digging and, you know, realized that it wasn't, but... It's possible that this bandage man was around in the 1960s. Um, I don't really know of any cases today of people seeing him. Um, so maybe it was just parents tell trying to convince their kids to stay home. I mean, I know for sure that if my mom or my aunt or whatever was like, hey, don't go out in this overlook. Like, you shouldn't be doing the stuff that you're trying to do in that car. You shouldn't do it. I'd be like, yeah, sure, mom. And then just like, you know, still sneak out and go to that overlook. So I'm sure that they had to think of something. So one last question that I do have to offer is, do you believe in the bandage man of Cannon Beach? Do you think that there's possibly something out there? I mean, I could be completely wrong, with the whole story of, like, the police or the parents coming up with this or even the kids coming up with this, there could have been a, a ghost or a spirit of some poor guy that just got, like, hacked up by Saul's and, like, they wrapped him in bandages and stuff. But me personally, I don't, I don't know. So let me know what you think. Or, or do you live anywhere near Cannon Beach? If there's anybody out there that actually happens to watch this that lives near Cannon Beach, let me know what you think of this. Like, do you have, is this a legend that you've actually heard before? Is this your first time hearing it? I want to know what people of the actual city, town, whatever, I want to know what you think, okay? So let me know down in the comments below and thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I know uh, nobody likes that. And also on Spotify, if you want to give me a five-star review, that'd be cool too. I would appreciate it. And uh, yeah, so that's it for this episode. See you later.